time. Well, hello, everybody. It's great to see you all here tonight. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, you're very lucky because today's guest, it's my honor to uh, present Aydan, Aydan Ersuz, Professor Dr. Aydan Ersuz. Um, sh she is, as you know, our star for especially <laughs> young learners. Um, lots and lots of very good ideas, very good practical, uh, practical things that you can uh, copy, adapt, adopt uh, as you wish. Um, Today's topic is very young learners. I'm sure uh, all of you in some way or another are directly, indirectly related to, uh, to teaching young learners online. Uh, I can't imagine how to do it properly. Uh, I have no idea how you manage to do it because it's such a hard deal, even, even in live, in person, teaching young learners, very young learners is a whole different better to learn, uh, to hear from Aydan Hujam. She has wonderful ideas and ideas that uh, are grounded, uh, uh, ideas that you can uh, take to your classrooms, ideas that will make you think. Um, so without much ado, I'm going to leave the floor to Aydan Hujam. Um, probably it's best if you, if you all wait uh, more or less to, to, till the end to ask your questions. You can, of course, write them in the in the chat box. Um, let's give Aydan Hujam a, 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 her time so she can tell us what, what's on her heart, what's in her mind about young learners, very young learners, uh, not, not the least. So Aydan Hujam, the floor is yours. Thank you very much Thank for you. taking the time and uh, doing this uh, session for us. We Thank are, you. We Thank you, Susan Hujam. Thank you very much. By the way, Sibel Hujam, thanks a lot. Uh, I think uh, we were together with Susanna Oja in Tokat, uh, and we definitely enjoyed our time there. Susanna Oja, you can continue admitting people. I, I don't am, mind. Uh -huh. um, this evening, in fact, I'm going to talk about very young learners and distance education. And my presentation is pretty short, so don't worry. Uh, and if you have anything else to do, uh, you can go ahead and do it. <laughs> Well, as there were, what's wrong with this? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't move. Yes. Here we go. This is the answer. If you have five-year-olds or younger, yes, it's mission impossible. <laughs> Very short answer. <laughs> And that's the end of the session. Yeah, and that's the end <laughs> of the session. You can now go and rest and, you know, have fun. Well, actually, if you check uh, internet, you see that lots of teachers, parents complain how difficult it is to keep five-year-olds in front of the screen. Teachers come up with wonderful activities a song, for example, dancing, a wonderful story, a game, they don't care. <laughs> it takes only two or three minutes, not even five minutes, to sit here, look at the screen, and they are done. They are done. So I'm, I'm not going to say it is impossible, but it is almost impossible. So what you can do, you can have like a 10-minute activity, 10 minutes only. And if you're lucky, they will stay in front of the screen for 10 minutes. Well, who am I talking about? I'm talking about five or younger. Okay, so don't worry. Six and older, there's still hope for them. <laughs> so we're going to do some activities for them. You can... Um, Tell a very short story with lots of visuals, lots of demonstration, acting. You can keep them maybe in front of the screen. You can teach them a song, very short one maybe, but that's it. If your learners are six up to eight, I'm not going to talk about older than eight because well, they know how to sit in front of the uh, uh, screen. Maybe they don't enjoy it very much, but still, 
they know how to behave. With this group, six years and a bit older, up to eight, let's say, uh, well, I, I need to clarify why I keep saying it's, all, it's almost impossible to keep students younger than five in front of the screen. You know what, why? Because these children need to spend time at school. School is not a place for learning for them. School is a place where they can socialize where they can play with others, communicate, interact with others, play with others, learn the social language, how to say please, thank you, excuse me, you know, uh, collaborate. Uh, I have a visual, why don't I show it? Okay, <clears throat> they need to <coughs> work together to learn, to cooperate, collaborate, you know, because they are very egotistical. Me, 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 me all the time. But when they, they are under the supervision of teachers, they know that they need to share, okay? They need reasoning, logic. If you have attended Soneroja's session, he kept saying, Reasoning, logic, reasoning, logic, reasoning. Yes, it is the fundamental principle of education. They need physical activity. They are extremely kinesthetic. It is a torture for them to sit on a chair for more than two or three minutes. Have maybe cushions on the floor, maybe a very nicely comfortable, uh, <coughs> comfortably decorated place. Ah, they may sit over there, but they need physical activity and they need immediate feedback. That is to say, the teacher needs to say, yes, that's right. No, let's try to correct it immediately. They can't wait. If you give them delayed feedback, they don't get the feedback. It's lost. Okay. Um, is someone's microphone on? Because I keep hearing some background noise. If so, please. Okay. Aydın hocam mikrofonu kapattınız. Hocam mikrofonu kapattınız. Mikrofon kapalı. Aydın hocam. Aydın hocam mikrofon kapalı mikrofon. Yeah, someone muted me, I guess. Uh, my dear co-host, you did that? Yes. <laughs> I did that. Yes. What kind of a moderator I have? See? Uh, I wanted you to repeat what you said. It was very important. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I said you need to accept the fact that distance education online education, whatever you want to call it, is not natural for very young learners. They need the physical atmosphere. So forcing them is not going to give you anything, give them anything anyways. They're not going to learn anything and they're going to cause lots of problems at home and the parent will definitely end up with a terrible headache, hating you. Most probably, right? Uh, okay. Every now and then I get a... Uh, my laptop is rebellious this evening. I don't know. Yes. Because online education causes social isolation. These kids are locked at home. They are locked at home together with their parents. They are sick and tired of parents now. Once they did miss their parents a lot, now they, they don't want to be with them. And you know what? Just between you and me, parents are sick and tired of their own children. It's not that easy to spend 24-7 with your child. And children 
when they do not go to school, they lack interactivity. Physical, they lack physical activity. They lack interactivity. That is to say, they cannot act together with their friends. And they lack participation. I mean, online teaching, how, how much do you think you can participate? Right now, what I'm doing is I'm lecturing. And you're listening. As an adult, you can bear, you know? You can, um, well... What you can do, you can just uh, turn off your, um, maybe uh, the camera and then sleep over there or leave the room. But uh, a young child cannot do that. Another point with um, online education is delayed or insubstantial feedback. Now, some teachers are so overwhelmed because of the curriculum, it's so loaded. They keep giving homework, 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 homework. These kids are not going to do those because they're not going to get any feedback from you. Can you really deal with all that work? You can't. I mean, online teaching um, definitely exhausted all of you guys. You're all burnt, burnt out right? But you're still <laughs> fighting to be able to accomplish your profession, to do your job. And uh, I have seen this somewhere, and I love it. One of the biggest challenges teachers face is keeping their learners engaged, focused. Remember, young learners cannot focus their attention on something more than five, 10 minutes. Their attention span is very low, right? Another point that teachers find difficult is keeping them motivated and interested. Now, if you're at home, you're surrounded with lots of potential distractors. I mean, the kids have their toys over there. The television is on, maybe. Maybe the mother is talking on the phone with the grandma. I don't know. But there are several distractors, unlike the school environment. Have you seen this? I covered the picture and the name, of course. But um, I will give you <laughs> one minute to read this. <laughs> okay, now my question is, can you see anything odd, strange, unacceptable about this message? You can't. Okay, I want you to please focus your attention on the second sentence. I'll spend 15 minutes explaining a literacy task. Is there something wrong with this? <coughs> no? No? Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much, guys. I mean, you have immediately noticed it. Some, some people share this and say, well, poor guy. I mean, ha, these students are crazy. No, you know what? The teacher is crazy. As you have all noticed, I can see your uh, remarks here. Thank you very much. You don't explain for 15 minutes to a six-year-old child. Come on. If you do that, of course they're going to go and uh, go inside and come back with a question like, do you have a cat? 
because you have already lost their attention, lost their interest. One point I want to underline with young learners, very young learners, explaining is not an option. Don't explain. Do, do. Demonstrate, ask them to do. Demonstrate, ask them to do. It should be very fast, you know. Well, I'm sitting now, so I can do it. Normally in the classroom, it's very tiring for the teacher because, I mean, they don't sit there and listen to you, okay? Now, how can we avoid explaining, start doing, demonstrating, and immediately engaging them? Remember, I'm talking about six years six-year-olds to eight-year-olds. Now, there are certain assumptions. Before I start some giving some suggestions, I have some assumptions. Now, the first assumption is the child is in a safe and loving environment. Okay? Otherwise, there's no learning. There's no abuse, danger, or tension. Mother and father are not fighting. There is no physical, verbal abuse, nothing like that. All of the child's basic needs are met. They are not hungry. They are not thirsty. They don't need to go to the toilet. You know, <laughs> everything. They have a very good device. Nice laptop, nice tablet, I don't know what, but a good device and a good internet connection. Because if you do not have these, uh, don't even watch uh, this presentation <laughs> because there's no meaning in trying to teach something to a little child who suffers from uh, abuse, for example, or who is hungry or who doesn't get any internet connection, right? A cozy and quiet place and an adult present. Hopefully, an educated person who is not going to butt in. I'm terribly sorry for the expression that I use, but some of the parents do not know how to sit silently and control their child. They just think that they are a part of the lesson. They are not. Okay, they need to keep their hands off the lesson. They are there just to control the child, not the lesson. Okay, so if these assumptions are met, now we can move on to how to teach how to deal with young learners. Now, I don't know how many of you teach young learners. What do you do when you first go to the classroom with your young learners? Yes, of course, you, you say hello, you greet them. Uh, yes, with a smiling face. You try to get to know them. Uh, anything else that you do? To learn their names, okay. Okay, a TPR activity. Class contract. Okay, excellent. Why do we need a class contract? Are young learners familiar with the classroom setting? Mm, nope. Excellent. Classroom rules. Class rules. Establish rules. Very good. Excellent. You need to set rules. Rules need to be short, accompanied with visuals because <coughs> they cannot understand long sentences okay can we do the same 
with online teaching? Yes, we can. I have prepared one for you. Here we go. I have, well, this is not mine. I just collected uh, different uh, ideas and compiled my own. So be on time, come prepared, find a quiet place. Now, maybe in the first meeting, explaining the rules in English can be problematic for you, but you can use your body language. I'm not uh, for the idea of switching to Turkish unless you are dying, you know, and you need to ask for help because you're learn for your learners, you're the model. If you keep switching to Turkish, whenever you feel that they need, you know, clarification, they will immediately think that, ah, if I pretend that I don't understand, my teacher will switch to Turkish. Excellent. And I can play play dumb. That's very easy. Öğretmenim anlamadım. Öğretmenim anlamadım. Öğretmenim anlamadım. Because they are so determined and stubborn. If from the first lesson they understand that you're not going to do it, they will try harder to understand what you're saying. Of course, in face-to-face -face situation, it is easier to use your body language. But here, online teaching, you have more visuals. So you can say, for example, showing the watch, be on time. Hmm? On time. Okay? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. There is a button. You can teach how to use those buttons. And you're not the only teacher, by the way, teaching online. So <clears throat> I have found another one. But I believe these sentences are a little bit difficult for our students to understand. So maybe you can employ something like this for uh, older learners, like maybe 10, 11, and definitely they shouldn't be at A1 level. They should be at least A2 level to be able to understand what these rules mean. Because in order to obey the rules, you need to understand the rules, right? If you don't understand the rules, you're not going to obey them. So <clears throat> make sure that you have visuals, clarifying meaning for younger learners, and definitely explain it, okay? And talk about it. They can respond you, answer you in Turkish. I don't mind that. Don't pretend that you don't understand. If they say, öğretmenim, vaktinde gel mi diyorsunuz? Those, ah, no Turkish, please. That's not natural. They know that you are a Turk. So go ahead and say, excellent. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Yes, that's right. See, you're the one who is switching to Turkish, not me. <laughs> See, okay. It's always, yes. Yes, okay, excellent. I, I also checked the chat box. Uh, there are some excellent ideas over there. Now, um, I have tried to come up with several visuals because I'm a visual learner myself. So I have two rules here. One is be realistic and please set achievable goals. Do not try to cover the normal face-to-face -face curriculum. It's impossible. You can't do that. Uh, well, I know, I know the ministry <laughs> keeps saying uh, certain stupid things, but don't, don't mind uh, those things. I mean, you're not going to run like uh, a, a racehorse here and lose all of your students. Better stick to 
realistic, achievable goals than unrealistic, unachievable ones. So the best thing to do is to break down the lesson into smaller pieces. They have short attention span and they can easily be distracted by something, you know, uh, around. So if you're teaching 10 minutes, have five to 10 minutes fun, relaxing activity. Then go back to teaching, relevant, of course. This is like a, a unit working together. The fun, relaxing activity needs to be related to what you're teaching. I'm going to give an example, so don't worry about that. After 10 more minutes of teaching, have five to 10 more minutes of fun, relaxing activities. Okay? This is how you can go, like for 40 minutes with uh, six to eight year old kids. Now, let's assume that we are teaching numbers. And we are teaching numbers from zero to 10. Now, I would show the numbers on the screen big enough for them to trace, okay? While saying the number together. So ask them to unmute themselves. Open your mics. Are you ready? Now we're gonna with your finger, trace the number and say the name. I'm watching you guys. I'm watching you, okay? Let's go. One, two, three. Zero. 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 Continue doing that. Yes, yes, continue. Shebnam, can you please trace the number? Trace the number, yes, very good. Zero, zero. Of course, I'm not going to torture you guys here, but with my learners, I would definitely one by one feedback. Remember, immediate feedback. Don't delay it. How, if you know that, for example, Shebna Mojam, can I use you as an example? Okay. Uh, if you think that, for example, Shebna is a slow learner and uh, she's shy and you don't want to really embarrass her, how you can ignore her on purpose. But the moment she does something correctly, you need to give positive feedback because you yeah. know that Shebna is shy. So if she stands up and says something, Shebna Mojam, say something. Zero, for example, say zero. Uh, zero. Excellent, Shebna, I heard you. Great. What did Shebna say, guys? See? Zero. Positive. Positive feedback. Positive reinforcement. We teachers uh, have a tendency to focus our attention uh, on negative behaviors, but mm. I think it's high time we start ignoring negative behaviors and focus our attention on positive ones. Let's go. Remember, this is going to take time. One. Let's trace the number. One. Say One. it. One. 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 See what I'm doing. I'm getting closer to the camera so the students can see what I'm doing with my mouth. One. One. And then I'm not going to go up to 10. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so what did I do? Did I explain anything? No. The moment I started, I said, come on, do it with me. Do it with me. Uh, they may not be able to do it, so what? What's the big deal? I mean, you have time. You can, uh, well, you need to recycle it anyways. I mean, you, can, you cannot just uh, say, oh, okay, I have covered numbers, so I can move on to the next teaching point. No, you can't. Now, let's count with our fingers. Guys, I want you to hold your fingers to the camera. 
show me zero. Zero fingers. Zero fingers. Zero fingers. No fingers. No fingers. No fingers. Suzanne, excellent. You are not showing any fingers. Excellent. Okay. One. One. Two. See? Students and teacher go hand in hand. <clears throat> now, I have covered 10. Now we are, we are going to learn a song. Remember, 10 minutes of teaching. Now, fun time. Song is excellent, but I cannot leave numbers behind. I need to relate the fun activity to the numbers. Now, do you know uh, One Little, Two Little Indian Boys? Are you familiar with the song? Most probably. Now, what I have noticed is when I checked it on the net, I saw that the song itself received lots of dislikes. It's a children's song. Why should it receive dislikes, I thought. And then with my daughter, we discussed and said, maybe it is politically incorrect. Maybe it, it, because it is racist. I don't know. I don't belong to that culture. So I don't know where that song comes from, whether it refers to a, a minority group, an ethnic group, and that ethnic group is not happy about it. So you know what I did? I changed the lyrics. I have. One little, two little, three little alien toys. See, no one can say anything about it. <laughs> no. I'm not going to offend anyone, hopefully. So what I'm going to do is we are going to learn a song. Okay. Watch, watch, look at me, look at me. Try to do what I do, okay? One little, two little, three little, alien, four. Of course, you would have the visuals, alien toys or pictures. And they don't need to know the lyrics. They can join with the fingers. Yeah. One, one, two, one. The teacher is singing anyway, so they don't need to worry about it. But keep an eye on them. Pay attention. If you see that, for example, one of your students is still doing four when you say five, you say five little, five, five little, five. Just keep saying it until that student, well, if he or she doesn't understand, then call the name. Okay, I can't see five fingers over there. Uh, well, well, they don't need to believe in aliens because these are alien toys. We are not uh, dealing with aliens. Uh, most probably they are familiar with animated movies like uh, Toy Story. Uh, there are alien toys there, but because of the copyright problems, I cannot use any visuals because you know that we put these videos on YouTube and Disney is very sensitive about <laughs> the copyright problem. So I'm not gonna use those. They have uh, wonderful alien uh, toys over there. When they come to 10, you can count backwards. 10 little, nine little, eight little. The first time is not going to be natural. The first time is going to be slow because you're modeling, but you're still teaching. They think that they're singing, you're teaching. Okay. Well, come on, laptop. Okay, now stand up. You remember 
uh, my first session oturmaya mı geldik? I said younger children need action. Stand up. We're going to do, well I can't because then you won't see me. I want you to jump zero times. Mm, very good, very good. I want you to spin, spin, turn around three times. <laughs> Suzanne, excellent, excellent, my favorite student. <laughs> If you think that spinning three times can give make them dizzy, ask them to spin the other way well again three times okay raise your arms up five times one two i'm counting three see what are we doing physical activity but at the same time counting okay clap seven times punch the air Nine times. This also get, gives them a kind of um, anger management activity as well. You know, if if they don't, they don't feel comfortable, they can punch the air. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. Every now and then I get this problem with my laptop. Now... Go and find three toys. Come back in two minutes. Wait. Let them go, run, whatever. Find three toys. Doesn't have to be expensive uh, a toy. It can be anything, okay? Uh, and then when they come with their toys, you say, okay, Choose one, show it to the camera, and introduce. Ahmet, show your toy. Ah, Shebnam Hocam already has a toy. Wonderful. <laughs> introduce that toy. Uh, okay, uh, let me try. <laughs> Just the I name. Just the uh, name. What is her name? Uh, her name is in Italian. Can I say it? Of course. Okay. Her name is Ragazza del Mare. Wow, Ragazza. What a sexy name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, uh, even if the child doesn't have a name for the toy, well, don't forget that these are young children, so they do not have a, a high competency level. So when you say introduce, they cannot say, well, this is my uh, doll, uh, ragazza. I bought it. No, they can't do that. So just say, say the name. That's enough, you know, because uh, when they succeed something, when they can do something, they feel motivated. Otherwise, they lose their motivation. And if they think that they, they cannot cope with the stress, I can't do this. What do they do? They immediately start displaying negative behavior, right? Okay. Come on. I need to buy a new laptop. Okay. Another physical activity. Imagine there is an apple tree. Stand up. Pick, pick eight apples one by one. Say, count one. Two, three, physical activity, see? Then you can say, look, there are apples on the ground. Ah, now pick five apples one by one. Now, see, they're doing the physical activity. Don't forget to encourage them to count while they are doing the activity because we are teaching numbers okay don't forget that uh 
we are not picking apples, actually. <laughs> okay. Now, other points that I want to um, warn you about is, one, you need to be patient with your students. I know I'm asking too much, but they have... I, I keep saying this, they have low attention spans. If they lose their interest, you need to somehow uh, ask them to come back. Okay. Uh, I mean, can you please jump three times again? Huh? You know, just get the student, engage the student again and show that you value them. Now, how can you do that? Um, I'm not going to go into that uh, very emotional, uh, dramatic thing. I just, I'm just going to say very basic three things. Now, use their names. This is, for me, much better than the classroom setting because I have a terrible memory with names. And I sometimes give names to my students that... That's not even their names, you know. I keep calling an Emre, for example, Ahmed. And poor guys, they keep saying, Hocam, benim adım Emre, Allah aşkına. No, but on the screen, the names are there. So you have that advantage. You can use that advantage. Use their names. Use routines. If, for example, you teach for 10 minutes and then do a fun activity uh, or a relaxing activity for 10 minutes, they will know the routine. Okay, 10 minutes, and then I will have 10 minutes of fun. And use short activities. Do not ask them to write. Writing is very difficult for young learners. It will take hours for them to write something, okay? I'm just going to postpone answering some of the questions that uh, you have. Uh, don't lecture. We have already mentioned that. Don't explain or talk too much. Always encourage them to talk with you together, all together. Come on. And please give them enough time to think and answer. I have seen teachers asking a question and then in a second they give the answer. If you don't wait, they're not going to even think about the answer. If I say, for example, um, what is your favorite animal? I'm waiting. Silence always makes others uncomfortable. So they, they, they panic. They, they need to say something. Oh, my God, she's not talking, so I need to say something. Huh? Even when you're with a friend, too much silence is not very good, unless you have a, in a very romantic setting, of course. Don't say... What's your favorite animal? Dogs? Do you like dogs? Do you like cats? Birds? How about birds? Yeah, be shut up for God's sake. Let them think. Let them come up with an answer. Okay? Now, we're going to do another activity. I want you to look at the balls. Okay. Now, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Count to ten. Together with me, okay? One, two, three. What are we doing? We are relaxing our eyes. Because we have been looking at the screen for a long time now. Even for the teacher, it is a must. You need to relax your eyes, okay? Count to ten. Ten. Now open your eyes. How many red balls are there? Let's count together. One. I can't hear you guys. One, two, two three, three, four, four five. five. Very good. Excellent. 
After six. five, what do we have? What do we have? Five, six. Very good. Seven. Uh, seven. Okay. Yeah. Eight. Eight. Excellent. Excellent. Now. Nine. 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 <laughs> Okay, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Count to ten. One. I One. can't hear you. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Four. Four. Five. Six. How many are here today? Eight, 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 Open your eyes. Now count the red balls. How many red balls are there? Let's count together. Okay, We don't need to count. Now, we, I don't have eight balls, for example. Now I have changed the number. Okay, As you can see, I have two, four, six, seven. You can come up with another picture. This time you may have only three. Doesn't matter. Now, Remember, when you learn something in a sequence, somehow it's related to the memory, the brain, the brain function. If you forget the first element, you cannot recall the second element. So it's, it's always like uh, zero, one, two, uh, one, two, uh, you know, so... In order to break that sequence, we need to come up with activities where we say three, seven, one. Okay, break the sequence. Now, increase participation by using annotation tools on a shared screen and using breakout rooms for pair work and group work. But please. Use these only for seven or eight-year-old kids. Even six-year-old kids cannot function in breakout rooms. They feel more comfortable in the whole group setting. They don't know what to do when they end up in a breakout room. Okay. How with six-year-olds, you can use annotation tools. Draw something on the screen um or i don't know i mean uh, add an eye you know that kind of thing but these actually are for a little bit older kids okay please don't give too much homework please they hate it if you're gonna give homework make sure that it is short and fun and if you cannot check their homework, if you cannot give feedback, don't give homework. Because delayed feedback, I said it before, I'm going to say it again, or insubstantial feedback is worse than no feedback. Don't do that, please. Don't give homework then if you cannot give any feedback, okay? For example, I have uh, an idea, a suggestion for homework. We have covered, remember, numbers from 0 to 10. And in the activity, I have uh, used red apple, red ball, you know, apples, pick apples, red ball. So now I'm going to ask them to a kind of a, a post activity, draw five red apples color them okay that's the end of the lesson the next time when they come back 
or you ask them to email their homework. Well, maybe take a photograph or scan, whatever. If you're not going to do that, ask them to show their picture to the camera all together. Okay. Like this. And one by one, one by one, check. Ah, oh, excellent. Gülben, wonderful. Uh, Mehmet, I can count one, two, three, four, five. Five apples. Great, great job. One by one. Because now the child feels valued. He spent time to draw these apples. You need to show that you care. Okay? So you may think that, well, I only, uh, I spent 40 minutes just to teach numbers from zero to 10. You're lucky if you could teach numbers from zero to 10 in 40 minutes, actually, right? With young learners, I keep saying this. In fact, related to online teaching, this must be your key. Less is more. Don't give a load. This heavy load will bury the child. The child cannot carry this. Okay? So, please give little pieces. Little pieces. Digestible edible pieces then they can just eat by themselves and feel full satisfied huh? this is the end of my presentation please visit our website i have the address there follow us on facebook and instagram and please subscribe to our youtube channel remember our motto together we stand. Nowadays, together we sit <laughs> in front of the screen, unfortunately. Okay, now um, I can have a look at the questions. Susan Ojam, do you um, want to do I, it? I, I took uh, notes for two things which I thought you might want to touch upon. Mm -hmm. um, one of the our teachers said uh, some of my students already say that they already knew what I was doing. Uh -huh. um, so she's kind of doing uh, things that the class already knows. So that was one of the comments. Maybe you would like to say something about that. Well, I, I have... that means this uh, teacher does not know the students. Uh, am I right? I guess. Yeah, I guess. because uh, normally as a teacher, I would know my students. I would know what they already know, what they need to learn. But if it is your first encounter with the students, if you do not know what they have learned so far, uh, what you can do, you, uh, remember, always have some extra activities. If they say, Örneğin ben bunu zaten biliyorum. You know what? You can immediately send your extra activity to that particular student. Now, after a while, these students who think that they are uh, smart Alex <laughs> <laughs> learn to keep their mouth shut because they will see that you keep mm -hmm. sending them extra activities. Ah, excellent. You know that? Great. I have an extra activity for, for you. Here you go. We're not punishing the child. That definitely. Please don't take it as a punishment. What I'm saying is they need to continue cooperating and collaborating. Just because they know something or they think they know something. Yeah, that's, that's it. You're not going to ignore the rest of the class. Just because one or two students say, I know that, I know that. You know what I do usually? I prepare like at least 10 activities. These activities, for example, they are extra activities. Normally, they, it, they take a long time. Try them out. So 
if they say öğretmenim biz bunları öğrenmiştik oh, good let's go very fast then huh? fast 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 cover let's cover all of them always have extra activities with you if you cannot finish them that's okay save them for another time but if you uh, just go very fast you will never say oh my god i'm out of activities what am i going to do now <laughs> okay yeah. so it's yeah. always a I good idea option. to be prepared mm -hmm. I don't know, John. Uh, another one of our teachers has a longish comment. The essence is uh, there are some kids in the class who who grasp things very quickly, probably because they've had more English, longer English classes, whatever, you know, before. And some of them are behind. So the, in the ideal world, you have a uniform un, uh, uniform class. In the re In reality, this is the situation. You have a mixed ability class, mixed knowledge class. Um, so this teacher is asking, it's a big dilemma for me. What should I do? Should I ignore the weaker students or is there something I could do better? Um, well, of course not. You cannot ignore weaker students. Now, the answer that I have already given applies mm -hmm. to you too. Now, if some of the students are faster, give them extra activities. And use those activities. You can ask them, for example, well, if someone says, okay, now, can you? I'm just coming up with now uh, this idea. Draw four stick figures, four boys and girls together. Huh? Draw them. I'm going to use them because helping the teacher is always a very good motivator for the child. And if you somehow come up with it immediately, an activity related to that picture, excellent. Or you can say, if, <coughs> if you're done, I want you now to hop to the window But you cannot hop more than five. Yeah. Go to the window, hopping five times, come back, hopping five times. See, that will keep the child busy. Now, with young learners, physical activities are excellent. Just keep using them. Keep using them. Okay. I, I don't know, John. <clears throat> Excuse uh, me. Susan Hocam, I have noticed a question here. It says, what is the acceptable amount of students yes, for online yes. lessons? Yes. Now, normally... Five, six-year-olds. Yeah. Five, six-year-olds. Well, year olds. I said five and younger are hopeless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm not going to answer that part. If you have five-year-olds, you can have only like four, five, or maybe up to ten, not more than ten. But they're not going to stay in front of the screen. So don't worry about them. <laughs> I would say uh, 15 is acceptable. More than 15, you cannot follow them all. Okay, so some of the students may feel neglected. So I would say 15. That's my number. Yeah, and the teacher is not an octopus with uh, eyes at the end yeah. of the eight tentacles. I mean, you're concentrating on doing your lesson, yes. uh, following your lesson plan of some sort, checking the kids. It, it's, it's, it's very difficult. So 15, even 15 is a lo lo big number, but probably uh, teachers can ha handle that. Uh, not easily, but uh, it, they can handle it. Well, uh... I think it's, it's tough. handleable tough. Yeah. number. Yeah, I agree. Um, another, uh, another. in fact, two people uh, mentioned role play on, uh, while doing Zoom. Uh -huh. uh, in a Zoom class, how do you do role play? Can you do it? Any advice? Uh, again, if your students are like seven, eight, you can use breakout rooms for role play. With the whole group activities role play is very very difficult because these this uh, 
with younger students, like six year olds, seven years old, year olds, it's more like lockstep. You are yeah. the uh, model. They need to see you. They need to work with you. Remember what Sonero just said, younger students do not do well when you know they work in groups online. In the classroom setting, uh, you can always control them, you know, when uh, they work in groups, but online uh, teaching. Uh, so, well, if you're using breakout rooms, definitely role play is good. You can use dramatizing. Uh -huh. Dramatizing uh, works better in whole group activities. You can say, for example, um, lick your paws like a cat. Show me. Lick, lick. Imagine that you're teaching a verb. Or you can say, okay, do you remember uh, in our uh, session, we flew like a bird. We flapped our wings. Mm -hmm. So dramatization is more preferable for me, my opinion, uh, than role play. Thank you. Um, two more, more uh, Two, uh, two things about homework. Uh, you said, uh, remember you said, uh, draw five apples and color them red. Yeah. And one of our teachers quickly added, uh, as a tip probably, uh, uh -huh. Google auto, auto, auto draw is very good for, uh, for drawing. Uh, wh what do you feel about, what do you think about uh, some kind of uh, mechanical uh, application kind of thing versus drawing by hand? Uh, is there any preference? And the other homework question is, somebody uh, says, Hojam, uh, what do you think about online homework? Sometimes I give listening homework by using uh, live worksheets website. Is it suitable for them? I it's, don't know what live uh, workshop sheets are. Uh, it's okay. I mean, you can, if you have tried it, and if you have seen that it worked, use it, continue using it. Now, I personally, if I'm going to use a video, for example, or a listening activity, I would find something really fun rather than a uh, uh, lesson related. Well, I, I shouldn't say lesson related. Of course, it needs to be relevant to the topic that you have covered, but uh, maybe a video, maybe a very short animated video related to numbers. And you can say, I want you to watch the video and find how many flowers are there. Give them always a reason to watch uh, the video, to listen uh, to whatever song that they, but give a, a simple reason. Do not give a complicated thing. Like, I want you to count the flowers and then I want you to do the, no, just give one uh, reason for them to watch because what you want them what you want them to do is to just revise okay just recall what they have covered and have fun at the same time because you want them to continue doing their homework uh -huh. they, you don't uh -huh. want them to feel uh, oh my god another stupid worksheet you know we don't want that. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Jam. Somebody says uh, they would like to increase interaction between students. Very hard. While, while doing online education. Very hard. Uh, not teacher to student only, but or the student to teacher, but between students, among students. That's yeah. the breakout room again, probably, for older students, right? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry to come up with the bad news. But uh, I mean, I have been reading and research searching uh, on this topic. I haven't seen any positive remarks related to this really. Mm. Well, if the child is 10 or older, 
you have no problems. You can use breakout rooms. You can have, I don't know. I mean, you can even have uh, uh, some kind of an assignment. You can say, well, after the lesson, I want you to pair up and do a video, I mean, make a video together. You can do that. But with younger ones, you yeah. are the reason why they are sitting in front of the screen. The moment you put them together to do something, they're going to just start talking. I said it too gracefully, Dim. So you think it's a lot? You know, they're not going to do an activity. Mm -hmm. These are little kids, guys. Let's be realistic. You're not teaching my, university students. Uh, my ten-year-old uh, granddaughter. She what she does is she misses her friends with whom she had been together for four years. She's yeah. in fifth grade now. So what they do is they just don't log out. The lesson is over. They stay logged on and uh, they keep uh, they, uh, the small group uh, just keeps talking. Like you said, I such and share all which are you know, the silly stuff. But uh, I, I understand the, the, the teacher's hesitation and the concern because that's one lovely thing about school. I mean, when I think yes. back to my school days, which is in the Stone Age, I know. But, <laughs> you know, there are so many wonderful memories from things that we did in class uh, to tease the teacher, to tease each other, uh, to bond, to have fun. You know, I mean, we had wonderful moments, terrible moments. Uh, all of those things, these kids are unfortunately missing. So I understand that this teacher is concerned. She wants more interaction uh, between the students. So probably what she could suggest is, like you said, you know, they uh, connect after after class. Definitely. Um, and uh, uh, there is uh, one other question that I have noticed here. Uh, guys, uh, this uh, naughty student concept uh, student misbehaving concept actually has very complex explanations. Now, uh, I have said at the very beginning of this presentation that some of these children have horrible uh, conditions at home. Uh, now, at school, <coughs> even some of the teachers have terrible conditions at home. This is real life. This is not a movie. And uh, I have uh, heard several teachers saying school was a place where I could escape from the reality of home. Now I'm stuck at home. So it's the same with the kids. Maybe the kid has a very abusive environment and maybe the kid needs attention. And believe me, very much like commercials, attention doesn't matter. It can be positive attention or negative attention. Mm -hmm. Because if they think that they cannot get your positive attention, then they're going to go for negative attention. So they can unmute themselves, shout, say stupid things, interrupt, you know, just disturb you, their friends. The best thing is to ignore. Because if you keep saying, don't, hey, you, uh, Mehmet Hocam, I see your name over there, so I'm going to use your name. <laughs> Mehmet, stop doing that. Mehmet, Mehmet. You're giving what the child wants. He now has your attention. In fact, you're uh, neglecting all the other kids who are behaving nicely and rewarding this misbehaving child. Keep muting the child. Keep muting without saying anything. He unmutes, you mute. Unmutes, you mute. Okay? Keep doing that. I mean, it's not, it, it is nerve wracking. I admit that. But don't pay special attention. On the contrary, whenever Mehmet does something positive, mm -hmm. for example, today yes. somehow, he just participated, immediately pay attention and give positive feedback. 
Excellent, Mary May, wonderful answer. Brilliant answer. I love your answer. Let's hear Mehmet's answer again. Ah, now he mm -hmm. has received the attention that he wants because of a positive behavior. Okay. Is it a, a, a kind of a two plus two is four answer? No. We are no. dealing with kids maybe with psychological problems. And some children... Uh, are so afraid that they cannot cope with what you're doing. They are, they, they are like horrified. Oh my God, what if the teacher asks me now? What am I going to say? I don't know this. I can't do this. What do they do? They immediately start misbehaving. So you won't ask them. You won't expect them to know the answer because they are bad students. Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry, mm -hmm. in quotation yeah. marks, bad students. Mm -hmm. And some some of them are just doing it because they are bored. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know, John. You have hundreds, or lots and lots, hundreds uh, with the exa exaggeration, but you have lots and lots of thank yous uh, and and admiration uh, comments. Uh, <laughs> thank uh, you. I think thank you, you should, very much. You should look through those yourself. I will. Um, I, I think I think you've uh, answered quite a lot of questions. I'm I'm sure this is like an ocean. There are so many more issues, so many more things that we could touch upon. Um, this was a very good start. Maybe maybe we can uh, touch this issue later on again uh, from another angle. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else you would like to share with our well, participants? Well, uh, thank you very much for joining uh, this session and bearing with me. <laughs> I talk too much. I'm aware of that. Uh, I'm what I'm doing is uh, this is not a, a science science, guys. We are dealing with human beings. I don't have all the answers. If I had, I wouldn't be here. I would be neighbors with Bill Gates. <laughs> uh, I'm trying like you are. So what I can say is keep trying. You will find something that works with you. These are the things that I think can work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I wish you good luck. Take good care of yourselves because your health both psychological and physical, is very, very important. Keep safe and don't forget that. As Inged, we are always here for you. Thank you. Thank you all and see you at our next Zoom, uh, Zoom meeting next Friday. Yes. Uh, have a good week. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.